All these guys are racing against each other and, and nobody really looks the same. In the world of para-alpine skiing, the fastest times get the gold. Pretty simple, right? What if determining the fastest time wasn't really simple at all? What if it was about more than just pressing a stopwatch? What if, in fact, the entire foundation for para-skiing competition actually rested on a complex mathematical formula over three decades in the making? What if it could reduce any number of complex situations, disabilities, and conditions into one uniformed level playing field so the best athlete wins? It's real. It's called the factor system, and it's spectacular. But before we tell you about that, we need to explain the classification system. I am an LW6-8-2. I'm uh, classified as an LW92. And my personal classification is LW91. My classification is at LW11. Not every athlete that competes in para skiing has the same disability. That's why they're all assigned different classes. For starters, para alpine skiing is broken down into three categories sitting, standing, and visually impaired. Then each of those categories are broken down again into multiple sport classes to account for a wide range of types and severity of disability. The classification system, I guess, makes para sport possible. Um, without it, you know, we can't really give out medals to the best in every single disability category. And every athlete on the disabled side has the same amount of chance and the same amount of equality in the playing field. So you can be watching a race and a guy will come down with, with just one leg and outriggers and the next guy might have one leg and a, a prosthetic ski leg in their boot and the next guy might be missing an arm from here and the next guy might be missing both arms or have arms that don't work as well. So you, all these guys are racing against each other and, and nobody really looks the same. The system is brilliant. It makes an athlete's specific class relative to the rest of the playing field. And depending on an athlete's class, the clock moves slightly slower or slightly faster than the rest of the field. This means on race day, an athlete's class is factored into their race time. People watching at home probably don't even notice that the clock on their TV screens is running at varying speeds depending on which athlete is skiing, but it is. For example, somebody with a, a low degree of impairment can get a 100% factor, meaning that their time one minute and 30 seconds is actually the real time. And then somebody with a higher um, uh, disability factor, they would get a 68%. So if they would race down in one minute, this, uh, this would be, uh, um, the time would be multiplied by 68% and then you get the time. So this way we can have a, a competition, a fair competition for everybody. This time factoring system is designed to ensure that at the end of the day, the best athlete wins. I think it's a really fair way to produce our sports. The factor system in, in our sport allows all these different disabilities to compete against each other. Um, and you know the factors, people might say they're not perfect, but it is what it is. And you go out there and you know what you got to do to beat your competition. The initial formula that makes it tick dates back over three decades constantly being monitored to make sure it's fair, and it all combines to make for one of the most unique and complex scoring systems in the history of sports. It's not ordinary. But then again, nothing about para sports is.